Continues. And now on your screen is Chuck Collins. He is the author of this book, 99 to 1, How Wealth Inequality is Wrecking the World and What We Can Do About It. He's also the director of the Program on Inequality for the Institute for Policy Studies. Mr. Collins, thank you for being on the Washington Journal. You see, I'm the great-grandson of the meatpacker Oscar Meyer. So I was born on third base. I, was, I grew up in the top 1%. I won the lottery at birth. And uh, as my father used to say, bringing home the bacon has a different meaning in our family. <laughs> It really stuck out when I got my first car. <laughs> and what solutions are yeah. there? Well, it's, it's a huge part of that inequality death spiral. The wealthy get more power. They use their power to influence the political process, to change the rules of the economy so they get more wealth and power. That undermines the quality of life for the 99%. So that spiral just keeps getting worse. And the key is to intervene in it. Amira Woods is co-director of Foreign Policy and Focus at the Institute for Policy Studies. She specializes in Africa and the developing world. There have been incredible concerns about corruption, concerns about accountability, and I think those concerns have to be reflected in the leadership that's selected. Where is this going? I mean, well, it could go in many different directions. Ultimately, the ask in Invisible Children's uh, video is for U.S. military intervention to support the Ugandan military in its operations. Again, to apprehend Joseph Kony, whether he, in Uganda or in other bordering countries. I think ultimately what we have to say is that there's an enormous opportunity when almost 40 million people have viewed this video. Is it possible to turn that around, to pivot somehow, to have even, for example, attention paid on the International Criminal Court. And so what you have is really a quest for power, a quest for influence from those who want to be a part of determining the future of their country. Thank you, Chairman. Thank Welcome. you so much for this opportunity. I do believe that inequality is the pressing issue of our time, and I really applaud the committee for giving it this level of attention. But let me just point out that, for example, the ratio between CEO and worker pay has gone up from 42 to 1 in 1980 to about 325 to 1 in 2010. I'm joined by Robert Alvarez, senior scholar at the Institute for Policy Studies. Put them in perspective for me. Well, <clears throat> I think, you know, the, these events are unprecedented. This will be a showstopper. Why are you so sure? It's time to sort of do, do uh, some, some major reassessments about, especially in this country, about the advisability of having operating reactors in uh, in, in, act, in seismically active zones. Phyllis Bennis with the Institute for Policy Studies, your assessment of NATO's involvement in Libya and what it means for the rest of Africa. Well, thank you all. Thank you all very much. Phyllis Bennis, what do you want to hear? I want to hear that our security interests do not involve hundreds of thousands of troops and contractors there that the president has listened to the 64 percent of the American people who say that the war is not worth fighting and we should get out right away. That means as long as it takes to get on planes and get them home.